Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. That was that was a logistical battle that it I was, wasn't yeah, ready we'll, for. We'll talk a little bit about that actually because it's actually quite interesting. All right, cool. <laughs> How are you all? Are you good? Yeah. Welcome to CDR here in Sheffield. Um, my name is Tony Wachiku. Um, I head up CDR and have done for quite a while. For those of you who don't know CDR, CDR is a project that started way back in 2002. Um, pretty much it was like an extension of some of my experiences with the music industry and wanting to have a, a platform where you could be with like-minded people who are also working on music who also want to compare reverb tails and snare compression techniques, um, et cetera. Um, it's been going for a while. Some really good people have kind of come through. Um, and it gives me great pleasure to uh, bring CDR to Sheffield and have people like Metris in the place. Give it up. Um, and for the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to delve into a little bit about him as a, an artist and producer um, and his approach to music production and, quite uniquely, uh, sound design. Um, how are you, sir? Are you good? I'm, do I'm doing. Um, I feel a bit dishevelled as I yeah. as I spoke to you. We we actually sat we sat like a, a seat away on the train on the <laughs> exactly. way down. And we had no idea. We never met before, <laughs> but um, I need I needed that alone time. If I was honest, we of couldn't course. have chatted because um, you just needed your you need to do. Your I, thing. I think I'm on like the fifth day of a hangover, so <laughs> like <laughs> it just keeps yeah rolling on. Yeah, and also just you know we had a bit of a kind of a bit of a technical mare. Um, just now, but we're all fine now. So yeah, so this is Skype. Yeah, so we're exactly. Skyping. I'm screen sharing from my from my screen to um to Adams, and yeah. instead of going out there, the HDMI. So yeah. it's so a big little up bit Adam, delayed. everyone, um, and Yellow Arch people, <laughs> soldiers, <laughs> soldiers. It's great. Um, so yeah, so b before we delve into a track, um, um and your you know, talk a little bit about your process. I mean, what got you into sound? What got you into you know? Um, I don't know, actually. Uh, it's it's quite a tough question. It's I hadn't really thought about it too much um, before today. I mean, the the thing that I keep coming back to is is such a cliche, but I was given a tape by my cousin, um, which was a uh, One Nation. Uh, it was like a drum and bass party in the uh, in in the like the late nineties. I had that tape. I was always musical. My mum's a music teacher, so it was always like. I always had like all of her musical friends being like, "Oh, when you're gonna learn an instrument and all of that," and I think I'm I'm still disappointing her to to this day because when I say the computer, it's, it's it's not it's not as valid as like the oboe to her. Exactly. <laughs> um, Just tell her you can see grade eight on the uh, on the scale. Yeah, I, I I tried to do all of that. Like I was a guitarist, and um, and then I realized what well, one day I I met this I was like 15. I met this kid that was like 11 and just shredded. And it was just amazing, and it depressed me so much. I basically just that was it for me. So yeah, I was already making music at that time. I think it was it was kind of like quite arrogant, fifteen year old kid. Where if I know I'm not going to be the best at it, then um. So and then I started making beats as a kind of way of like I'm like I grew up like um in like suburbia, not too in the city, but it's kind of in the city. But like with Cambridge, which is where I grew up, it's not. It's not such a happening place, so I like I had a quite mix. acoustic guitar business over there. Isn't yeah, it? I well, basically you had like the people that were older were it's a big drum and bass community. So the people that were older were um, comics um, and new tone logistics, and we'd see them about a lot, and they were like our mates. It's such a small place that we'd be like, well, if they can do it, then so can we. Um, we being like a friend of mine who I don't know, he's a name for the heads, but he's a guy called uh, Divided who um, released on a label called Project Thirteen, and we both did this whole thing together. Um, he taught me how to DJ, I taught him how to make music, and then he went off and made better music than, than, than I, you know, he's kind of like, he's now changing the world as like, um, he's, at the, he's at the RCA um, doing like in, invention or something. But this isn't about him, like. <laughs> that was meant to be as more of a joke, but like, <laughs> bring him out. <laughs> but, yeah. As it happens. <laughs> <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd, but um, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, drummer bass, One Nation. I, I had the like a bit of a name drop here, but I had I was doing the same gig as um as Darren Debridge the other day, uh, and I kind of like chatted to him about it and chatted to him about the Nine. And as soon as I brought up the Nine, which is the Bad Company track, the famous Bad Company track, 
I saw him just like his eyes roll. It's like he's got so many like kids my age or like not even kids, like I'm 25, but like people my age just being like, man, the nine was so important to me. And I think he's, he wasn't like begrudging. He wasn't like, fuck off. You know, we got the same agent. Like he, can't, he can't say that, but <laughs> he totally could. But um, but yeah, he just heard it a lot. And that tape got into that electronic music. I was about 11 and that kind of started it. And then when I realized I wasn't the best guitarist in the world, so I just went on to doing this. Um, started on Reason, no, started on Fruit Loops, Demo, Reason, Logic 9. And then I just switched to Logic 10, which if anyone is thinking about doing Logic 9 to Logic 10, it's, uh, it's, it was a big, big thing for me. This track was originally made in Logic 9. And it feels like when I went through this the other day, it's a track from my last um, EP. I went through it, I was like, so bare bones compared to the stuff I'm doing now, but... Um, Is that post Logic 9? Yeah, yeah, six, six, yeah. Six yeah. Ten. So, okay. so, yeah, so sure. the, 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 the next EP I'm releasing on Time Dance is like way techier, way more flicks, way more like, um, like, I don't know, way more uh, texture to it. It's a bit more, it's a bit more 3D than this. This feels like quite a 2D project, but in, in, it, in, its, in that way, it's quite a... Um, uh, it's almost like I'm not throwing out all the the trick and and in a in a club it actually sounds it like sounds good for that because um there's not too much going on and it kind of just rolls on. So was it the drum? Was it the in, I guess the you know because a lot of sa- a lot of um sound design and a lot of kind of really kind of you know finite granular so- sound design techniques you know is very kind of synonymous with a lot of drum and bass. Yeah 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Was, is that would you say drum and bass is what drew you to the opportunity to ref, you know get into sound design? I think yeah, I think that's I think the sound design thing came from like the course that I went to study in, and it was kind of like um, it's a lot more of a meritocracy in that you I'm not you know I'm not necessarily um, saying it's against like DJ culture or anything, but you got to you know play the game a little bit with with DJ, and you've kind of like got to be present on social media you don't have to obviously like you have people like Helen the house who are like killing it and she doesn't have like any of the social media platforms but you kind of just got to be about that and 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 sound design is a way of just like you get a job because you get a job a uh, kind of it's not um i i recommend it as a career it's quite it's quite full like there's a lot of people doing it and i think if you have your own if you have your own slant on things, then it can only be good. Um, if you have your own, well, I'm going to go to this guy because X, Y, Z, um, then it can only help. Um, and um, it's kind of cool though, because yeah. I think a lot of the time people will go to say uh, a composer for a particular sa- you know sound or perspective, do you know what yeah. I mean, or a producer for a particular sound. But not that it's rare for a sound designer to have a signature and people go to someone as a sound designer, but actually, particularly in the context of dance music, in mm. the context of Drum and bass is mm. actually quite unique. I th- you say? I, yeah, totally. I think, I, but I think it's a completely, it's a completely different kettle of fish. Like um, making a tune to, um, to doing th- doing the sound design. Sometimes for me, it feels like a completely different area of my brain. Um, doing stuff to like motion and 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 stuff like that. Um, with with dance floor music, it's like, like I made some amazing bass noises in my in my time. I mean, I'm not like known for that or anything, but then I've never been able to fit them into a track. Do you know what I mean? So it's it kind of feels like that in that it, like music is so like writing dance floor music especially is such a like such a like black magic behind it. It's such a like a I don't know, in a different day, in a different mood, wearing a different t shirt, you'd write a different track, you know, it's like Whereas sound design, I'll just sit down and I'll do a job, and it's normally the 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 first idea that gets, yeah. It, uh, whereas I think with this EP with Omar, I don't know how um how well anyone knows Omar and how he does with feedback. We work quite closely, and that this was in the like um this is in like the twenty third or twenty fourth version. Another track on the on the EP was on its like thirtieth version. It's just, it's just a, such a slog, and it's exactly the same with the second, um, with this second record that I'm that I'm doing. Is like, it's just like over and over and over. But but you but you chisel away, and 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 I think, um, I think having a label owner that I trust that that um, that knows how to get the best out of me is a way of uh, is a way of making my music better than it was, you know, ever ever before. I think having that trust. So before we have a quick 
um, listen, in terms of, you know, developing your ideas and developing your track, considering that you're, you know, you've got a bit of a push on for sound design, do you, how much time do you spend on the actual sound creation before you actually start applying that to actually sticking a yeah, <laughs> under it or totally, whatever, whatever. Totally. Yeah. So like, if I was to go through this track here, I've got all of these things here which I cut and then I, I brought them down here. So basically, um, I use this, let's open it, let's see if it crashes my computer. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. I don't know. Should we roll the dice? <laughs> Should we roll the dice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <And it's> yeah. <laughs> flip a coin. So basically, I have all of these. Like, there are a few things I recommend down here. All these things are like fourteen pounds. This is like the holy grail. So everyone used. So basically, a producer called Alvanoto. Um, hit that was like his secret reverb. Um, so it so was gle Glitch Lab. Gle Glitch, Glitch Lab. Lab yeah, yeah, it's made by this one Italian um, uh, sound designer uh, coder. And uh, it takes quite a while to open, as you can see. <laughs> but also, like, look at my CPU from just, like, just sitting there. Like, it's just wet. So basically, I, as a little uh, MB, I don't use this laptop to make music on. Um, I use, like, a studio computer. So it might, it might chug a little bit along. We might get a few system overloads. But, um, but yeah, so I make this thing called Gleach Lab. Or I make stuff on a, on a, on a thing called Gleach Lab. And for example, this thing, Sample Self, is when I just put my own track through. So we could listen to that if you want, just on as like raw material. Um, let's have a little, I hope this doesn't blow everyone's heads off. Um. <laughs> So it's pretty, it's pretty raw <laughs> stuff. It's um, pretty glitchy. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, what I what I do with that is, I mean, if this ever opens, um, you basically get tracks and you just throw them in there, and then you can cut them up, and it's got a really nice time stretch. It's it's got like a modular system. I'm like the least techie guy. I'm like the least techie guy. Like I've got, it's a, it, I, 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 I'm about getting results really quick. I'm all about using a randomized button. I love presets. I like. Uh, if the if I, I I don't like like engineering synthesizers and stuff, it, it like it's it accurate sound curation, right? Do you know what I mean? It's like you hear something you think is interesting, yeah. You, you apply it, right? and and yeah, I sure. don't know if that like demeans my work or not. In in someone's eyes, I I'm I'm not really too too fussed because I if I if I get there quickly, then it's kind of um it's just how I do it. And I know people who are absolute wizards at uh, at, at their at their plugins and at their like um. And 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 you know, in the box, just absolute wizards, and and it's terrifying. I just I give me a preset, and then that I can just change a couple a couple things um, about it. Okay, here we go. So this is this is Glitch Lab. Um, it's pretty it's pretty intuitive, but um, so what you can do is, ooh, um, we've got some. If I go into samples. Um, you can see that I name some, oh God, like the stuff that I bounce out has just got some awful names. Um, so if I put that in there, look at the state of that. Look at that. It's gonna my computer's gonna take off. Um, let's let's see if it might it might just come out of my laptop here, but um, you gotta hook it up. I really recommend this software, honestly. Like it is just. <laughs> it's so good right um right so there's a little beat and that's what it sounds like on its own um and i can put a randomizer on it um hit the clock and then so i can slow it down time stretch it to its normal state and then uh get it moving about um that's moving a starting end point yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So you can zoom in on it, so you can just get it like that, and it's just, I mean, this is probably the dullest beat to have done this on, so it's like, um, but you get like a, you get like a really choppy, um, like something that surprises you, rather than you're kind of like, I know exactly what's gonna come out of here. I'm putting vocals in, um, let's just do, that says Vox, so I'm kind of like, ah. Right, so this is like, some bounces that I did ages ago um, and it just goes through here and you can just I mean sounds absolutely awful 
but <laughs> but I trust me, it's 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 worth the um, it's worth the fourteen quid like totally. Um, and it was it used to be like the number one thing I'd get all my sounds from is going in there. So it's like it was like a big secret of mine. And all of these things here, they're all like Gleech Lab bounces that I then put into like yeah. So the cool thing is almost like you use um Gleech Lab like your lab. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the fact that there is a lot of random stuff to it it's almost like you're waiting for the sound to jump at you, you oh totally I mean? yeah yeah you know, and if there's this kind of element of well kind of aspect of not being in control mm. do you know mm. what i mean and then you can bring totally. control in the door and in the timeline 100 percent, 100 percent. like i go into i get all these banks of stuff and i do it now but i do it with reactor and i use reactor as like the i use a plugin called catalyst to do essentially the same job as as bleach lab um and uh and yeah, you just get that raw stuff and I use it in these little, um, so basically I'll make these, oh, for shame. Right, um, so let's look at this one here, get the inspector up. So then I'll make these little, um, I'll make these uh, like uh, channel strip settings and everything will look like that so that I'll then like have it on quite a few. I mean, it's a bad example, but like, um, I have that setting on quite a few, and then just lob all my samples in there, and then they'll all, they'll all be different samples, but they'll all be treated in a similar world. Yeah. So you can lob something from like a session ages ago into a session recently, and it sound like it's in the same. So it's almost like a filter, you know, like a, well, in the visual world, it's like a filter. Do you know what I mean? It's like a filter mm -hmm. with a particular. Hundred yeah, percent. Sure. Yeah, that's like yeah. the perfect an yeah. analogy. Yeah, yeah. So and it, I normally put like quite a specific reverb in there to kind of like put it in like like a really short reverb or a big one. I, I basically made this like, um, I, I, I found this way of working on a track called Shit Patches. Like, um, I regret my track name so much, man. <laughs> That's like 19. <laughs> like, um, but, um, so like, I, 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 I did it on then. It was this big thing and I was like, how has I done that? So I like just saved it and just kept using it and everything after that. And it gets a bit samey after a while. So you have to like, um, Tweak it, but as I, like, I've never used this one in any other track other than this. So I basically just crush and compress the life out of something. It look, it's like such bad tech, like like practice to do this. But if it, if it's it, not, it's not at all. I mean, I think results. I think it's um, I guess you're just really into just you know almost like basically ripping the shit out of something beyond existence. And there's one existence in Gleech Lab, and then you bring it into Logic, and then you say, okay. It's got nothing to do with Gleech Lab anymore. 100%, yeah, it's yeah. got it's got the world of its own. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Sure. I, I I do it with a lot of like um, I cut up a lot of music concrete as well, um, because it was like, it was like it almost felt like my thing for a while that I was like because when I went to university, like um, there were a lot of I was introduced to that world and that world is like um, it's like. People listening to Orteca now and they're like, Whoa. and and Orteca is insane and I absolutely love Orteca, but people are doing quite similar stuff in like yeah, the eighties. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, sure. yeah. Like all these guys were doing it in like like sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, and um, and it felt like my secret for a while. It felt like my thing. Like I've got my hands on it, and you can just you you don't even need to like the music. You don't even need to like the sounds, but you can use it as as like an impulse. And I use it like I do Glitch Lab. Um, and if I put it into my world of like my, um, my my uh, insp uh, whatever the uh, plugin settings, yeah, the tr the track settings, then it feels like mine. Yeah, <laughs> um, of course. And, well, and it is. It is. Yeah. Um. So when you're building, um. In fact, let's just listen. To, should we listen for a bit? Listen okay. Come. Track? Yeah. The the intro kind of chugs along for a while, so I'll 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 drop us in like like with a few bars to go. <laughs>
but that that that's something a, great that's the um i uh, basically for the, the main thing in this track is like um it's like a de- delay basically that i built with like a, a like a really choppy delay if i could just find that man. Um, well, while you're finding it um i was going to ask a question um so in terms of your you've got all these sounds um you know different you know, squash them you know you manipulate them or whatever mm-hmm. are you conscious of what role they're going to play in the track or do you leave till later because clearly listening to that you've obviously thought about obviously something has to play a kick yeah something has to there's, yeah. there's bass there's percussion there's obviously standard dance music layers mm. but are you thinking about that when you're making the sounds well like originally this track was like all of this beat was built around having this huge section at the end with like a really big bass um and it was like it was quite bait it was quite like it was like really in your face and this feels like quite stripped back for me and i sent it to omar and he was playing like uh he's playing somewhere in paris and um and he was like send me a version without that synth and so i sent it to him and i was like this is lame like it's like it sounded so bad but he was like stick with it there's something there just with just the beat just focus on the beat and i'm not really like that kind of person that just sticks on a beat i get quite bored want to change stuff and uh so originally there was something completely different and the beat was just a kind of beat to hold the rest of it but i'm just like cutting up breaks i'm just cutting up like breaks that i f- like really bait breaks on this um but they kind of like they i mean here's the kind of like wonkier break that sounds a bit it's kind of i cut up that like that's that's a lot from what it <laughs> already is, you know. Like, um, I I think I I think I might have treated it somehow before, but like that's quite like true to the true to its original form. Um, and yeah, to answer your question, if I know where everything's gonna be in the like, I didn't know that the kind of delayed snares and that I'd end up putting. Basically, there's these snares here. Um, <laughs> that all go into this delay system right um blah 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 which is this which basically carries the track so if i solo that um that's like that delay designer in yeah well? it's yeah. just delay designer so i'm basically like what i'm what i do now with how i make music is like it's all reactor and it's all really techy but like this is this is just essentially logic and this is kind of like I don't want to like preach and be like, oh, you could do so much with just the the stock plugins and all of that. But like, this is essentially using mostly the stock plugins. And I think what gives this track a little bit of a uh, a feeling of of it being a diff- bit different, a bit more techy, is how much like I'm using sample delay to make things a bit wider in yeah. the ear. And also groovy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That it's kind of everything's a little bit off and everything's a little bit like more slung. So, I mean, yeah, if you look at, like, my mixer, like, the the stuff I'm using, your, that your, 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 C, your, your CPU's, like, oh, man. you're fighting with your CPU right about now. It just wants to, like... <laughs> it wants to fight you. It wants me to, to go <laughs> back to the hotel. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. But, so, like, I, be, I use a lot of Enveloper, yeah. and now what I would use instead of that is I'd use uh, this old boy. Um... Uh, where's the keys? I'd use this. This is this is this is really good, um, but um, but I like look at this man. Like I I use all these envelopers on maxed. Like they're all maxed, pulling down the pulling down the um the transient. So it's just like, and um I use that a lot, and I use it as a creative tool in as much as like oh like close and open the sustain which is with automation yeah yeah yeah. so So, like if we look at i i I don't know if i'm doing it in here but like i i automate quite a lot um i don't know how wide we can get that but like um yeah so i automate quite a lot on like quite a few different i automate on a lot of sends and like uh, that kind of boring stuff like it's so lame to talk about but like that's that's why we're here (laughs) yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, I'm just I'm so aware of how boring I sound. Like, I'm like, I wouldn't listen to this, but, but um, I appreciate um, most of you for still being here. Um, but but yeah, so the the, the automate uh, automation is a big thing in what I do. So um, it's about morphing that sound from from bar one until the end and just finding more life in it. 
like um and you tend to automate um in touch and then just do your thing and just feel i've done that more yeah Yeah. i've done that more now yeah i don't use um like uh like midi keyboards or anything for that but i'll just like mouse business just mouse business yeah yeah i'm so in the box like i'm so um i'm so kind of like in tune to to the computer now that i kind of i've i've tried using hardware and stuff and it just it doesn't speak to me in the same way it's just it's just one of one of those one of those i'm not i don't feel like i'm uh, I'm missing out really even though i definitely am but (laughs) no you're doing your your, yes your way at least you can pissing off some bearded guy at the back of the room right now you know make (laughs) make tunes in the train if you're not recovering you know what i mean you know (laughs) all in one little little space i find that quite difficult (laughs) like i I find stuff making stuff on the move i find it a bit like a bit showy as well do you know what I mean? You see some guy in Logic. I was, I was actually in a cafe and I saw some guy in Logic and I was like, that, that's what it looks like. So, so I don't think I did it after with, that. With, with his cappuccino. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Come on, guy. Like, <laughs> making the next big hit exactly. like, in this in this hip cafe. Yeah. Yeah. Before I see if these guys want a question, I w- I'll ask you uh, one more uh, question. Um, so given that this perhaps is a typical approach, I know you're, you know you're using different tools now, but there isn't really a plugin to be seen. Is that your thing? Are you or were you Mr. Audio? Nah, pretty much. Or? Nah. Do you know what? This is a complete out- outlier. Like this isn't how I make music. <laughs> just, just saying that. At the end. <laughs> Big prank. <laughs> this isn't even mine. <laughs> I paid for this. <laughs> um, this I bounced everything out because I was having I was having I was having serious troubles. Um, so what now I use now is. Uh, I use battery for my drums or reactor. Uh, I still use, I still do this business here. I still do a lot of that, and that's for my audio. But a lot of my projects now they just look like they just look like uh, like that. Basically, <laughs> they look like they just look like nothing. And um and I've kind so of it's like all MIDI events. It's all MIDI. Yeah, I'm using so much MIDI now. Like the next record, it sounds like it's it's it sounds like that as well. And we, and it's got that's got its pitfalls in that like I'm currently like absolutely like dying over this one reactor synth that sounds different every single time and it's 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 like a it's one of the um modular things but it's a pre- it's like a preset um and um and every single time it sounds different and i'm just fighting with it and then i'll send it to omar and he'll be like why'd you change the synth I'm like, i didn't Maybe, bounce, guy. Bounce, <laughs> like, maybe that needs to be bounced to audio. <laughs> I tried that, man, but yeah, every I mean, single goddamn time, like, and ah, oh, ah, oh, it's honestly driving me insane. Anyway, but that's it's not, yeah, it's not about that. But I, d- I don't do stuff like this. This is almost like how I made music. I made this track uh, like two and a half years ago. It's almost like that phase one you know, approach, and mm. now you're obviously a lot more. Using React a lot more, mm, using mm, MIDI events mm. rather than discrete audio. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Like this, mm. th- yeah. This this came out three months ago, but uh, yeah, it was made like two and a half years ago, and um, and it's just how ha- it's just how these things happen. Um, like just records take so long to come out. Um, but yeah, I use a lot of. I mean, if this doesn't crash my computer, then I don't know what will. But I use I use this a lot. Um, so this is this is really really nifty. Um, if it hasn't like, all right. So if we go into like, what it does is it like I don't know if it's this is just me flexing, but like um. So if I was to like drag a little something there, and then so this beat matches. So is that a beat matches? Yeah, I guess so. Let's go with that. <laughs> it's like um, and it's so nifty, like get it to like so it's like a glitching a glitching it plugin. sounds awful yeah. in there but like um that's what i use for a lot of my drums now and then i'll bounce that out and then i'll bounce that out and then you know stuff like that. i couldn't recommend this more like this this it costs a fair whack like it costs 90 quid just for a, a, a reactor ensemble um so it's kind of but it's, it's so worth it like i i I, I I don't use anything more than I use this. This is just an absolute weapon. Um and yeah, I couldn't recommend that more. That's that sounds like what I'm the stuff that I'm making now. <laughs> that tiny blurred thing that you didn't hear in the mix there. Well it's, well, it's interesting you you know, you've gone from a kind of um external 
um, you know, application mm. um, mm. to something that's a little bit more, you know, plugin based and focus mm. actually in the door. But you, you, you know, you apply the effect in the same way. Totally. You know, you just want sound to be mangled, yeah, and you want it to hit you in the face. You yeah, know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. You I know? used to get rinsed for using audio a lot. Like from all my drum and bass mates, they'd just be like. But they're all like it's a different it's a different breed like the, the drum and bass lot like they're they're all so techy so switched on so like it's a completely well different world from like making you know music at this kind of speed because it's more about the vibe the chug the groove the the kind of the little bits of color that come in and like out and 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 in drum and bass it's like it's like how good can you make that snare sound only in some areas like there's loads of, like all the bristol guys that are doing stuff like uvb and um uh like homemade homemade weapons who i know is in bristol but like that kind of stuff feels like it's moved on from that now it feels like a progression from from that and people aren't trying to like i don't know well, it's less digital isn't it they're, they're kind of you know they're kind of noisy you know when it's about kind of precision almost oh, like yeah, fm man. yeah you know, almost like really pristine sound noisier like for me they got that world like they got it down because they wrote amazing music but like they also made it like exquisitely produced um and i think it like i think in my head anyway it kind of can only be one or the other sometimes you can either make something so clean or you can make something that's got like life and soul and and I find you almost forego a little bit of that when you try and make it that techy that like you 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 lose a little bit of that like uh you you put in something that's like so chromium that yeah. almost like the fingerprints they they and like sometimes the fingerprints are what make this is an awful analogy but <laughs> well, it's, it's a good analogy you know it's, it's right, great analogy like, cool um, okay let's see if these guys want to I've got a question 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 over there ah of course hey mate um so how are we gonna do this um should we is this cable gonna be maybe not okay maybe shout it and then yeah speak up Yeah, uh, that's that's a, that's quite a broad question because it's like native instruments and native instruments gear is essentially like my whole studio now. It's like I don't really use much else. It's like an all in one. It's essentially a door. Well, the door just kind of like uh, is a way of um, just holding it all together because you can use like stuff like standalone, like battery there or like machine. Um, I have reactor as well, but like. Um, yeah, you can use stuff in sta in standalone. I don't know, like it, it it can be so predictable. You can like make like I don't know. You can make anything on on this stuff. It's 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 so powerful. I I couldn't recommend native instrument stuff more. Um, it's not because they've got like a gun to my head that <laughs> <laughs> will terminate no, the contract. There's, there's some great tools. <laughs> I mean, Reactor is obviously a fantastic example of you know almost like a Pandora's box of of, of ensembles both paid for oh, yeah man but there's like, a whole bunch of you know there's thousands of them that are free no that, one's yeah. seen it before it is just absolutely yeah. like mad like you've got everything in here I mean this kind of helped because I didn't know what it looked like before and like just to see like all of the oh, all of my stuff's been uploaded to the cloud told you i didn't use this for like <laughs> it's, it's honestly fine because like i don't use this but basically it can't like you get all of these like um this looks like it's still here let's roll the dice again so like um this is just like a, that's just like a kick ensemble and you can just randomize it and get like right let's i mean this could be like super boring but um let's just solo it and then you can just like hit the, you can literally roll the dice <laughs> and get like mad kicks from, I'd like admittedly find this quite like a, a, a thing to, I struggle with this plugin because like for all its, um, for all its uses, it's actually quite hard to wrangle with because they do like, all of this is quite like, it can get really muddy and you and but it sounds so good so you can't take it out but like uh, anyway um so if that answers your question <laughs> so yeah, i lost in a wormhole well well, mm. well the thing about reactor is that um on, on one hand it's the pro program itself 
and then the way it works um, is that essentially it's a scripting language. Mm. Essentially, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So you it comes. It comes like with yeah. So it, so it's basically a scripting language like Max for Live. Yeah. Um. And when you when you first get it, it comes with about five hundred ensembles that are free, and they're lots of different things. So they're ones that you know eff effects, ones that you know e emulate analog synths, digital mm. synths, or whatever. Mm. But actually, on the, on the website, it gets a lot more interesting because there's like hundreds of other people around the world who actually yeah. make free ensembles. So it's literally the, the world is your oyster. Mm. Every kind of synthesis or effects that you can imagine is available for free. Totally. Yeah. And also, you can open most of them and see how they're made. So literally, you've got, yeah, so it's literally like a shell. You know, you can open up, okay, how did that person make this crazy plugin? And then what you can also do with the free ones that you can take components out. Okay, I like the way they, that glitch thing, I can take that, make it as a module. It's a module. So it's a really, so you can be as, as, as simple or as deep as you want, you know. Um, so it's, it is a lot to take in, you know. That's why I'm, I'm really mm. curious. Like, I haven't even seen that one that you showed us. Though, well, it's like, which uh, is, uh, it's great. A lot know? of people mm. will say to me, like, it's like so techy that, that it's like really it puts them off. But I like, I'm like the least techy person. Yeah. I'm like I, I'm like spamming this guy and like and 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 I find it I find it easy enough to like um, oh, really? you do hey. do you want to swap do you want do you want to use this yeah but the good yeah. thing is it's almost like I like your approach because it's almost like you separate the wheat from the chaff do you know what I mean it's almost like you sure. go, you know what this plugin just randomizes shit yeah so I'm yeah just yeah, yeah stick some audio in it mm, hit mm. randomize that mm. doesn't work you know that works it's oh amazing yeah. that's the shit right there. Bounce it down. Next. It you know sounds I mean? so yeah. like lowest common denominator and I feel like such a fraud <laughs> sitting here. Like no, talking about how I randomize all the time. But the, but, but, the, but the irony of that is, no, no but this, this is where it gets really deep, right? Because yeah. if you look at a different um, uh, workflow, like if you look at the world of modular, for example. Sure, sure. Okay, so people are you're obviously using oscillators, effects or whatever. Yeah, but you just, get lost in but it. The, but, yeah. the, but what people get out of it is the randomization of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the fact yeah, that yeah. You know, you've got all these kind of triggers and Turing machines, all these little things are basically spitting out bleeps and boosts mm, at you. Mm, you know what mm, I mean? So mm, mm, I actually totally. think, you know, it's, it's actually a reaction to, if you want to oh, get totally. deep on people now, yeah, exactly. but then yeah, but exactly. then uh, yeah, exactly. So there's thanks for the yeah, thanks for the. I well, that's, that. well that, that's it. <laughs> but then but then also something that's yeah. But then also yeah. But then but then also there's something actually re really important about this is is essentially how you cur curate the madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. there's something about of course whether how however you approach making sound or creating sound at some point you have to make sense of it in terms of whether the, the track for a dance floor or for a sound design I think that's ad. totally it. Do you know what I mean? I think so, it's yeah. all, mm. I think like in, in t it like to validate myself slightly, but like in, in, what, <laughs> I, in what I use is the, these, I think the thing that I cling most to is these settings that I apply that make like stuff like this, which I hope this doesn't like. <laughs> so that's like the main like <laughs> and like I really hope it doesn't sound like the same after <laughs> this <laughs> but like um <laughs> so like it's kind of like um <laughs> pretty much the same but um but like it's about like making that world around the track so that your kicks and your snares can be really simple really boring not even do much but because there's so much else going around that it's all kind of tied together in this same world that kind of like makes sense and got lots of other subtleties going on with delay designer and lots of other things. Yeah, you know, you know, the delay designer, like I, I never, I used it as the, I used it as the, um, the A side of this record on Time Dance. I used just like a, a, a vocal sample that just went through. Yeah. And if I was to like, um, if I'm to like show you that, if I was to get that up again, um, I think this is the. Play. <laughs> so like everything's everything's coming through here um and this even is a preset like i, I swear i'm like falling apart in front of you right now <laughs> yeah we appreciate your honesty yeah it's fine well yeah, do you know yeah. what i once went to a, i once went to a, like a talk kind of like this when i was like 16 and i saw someone just lose the room by just being like just steal someone's kicks <laughs> and i'm like just not looking up because <laughs> Um, the, the the glares that it, that that guy received, but like he was also like a he was like a massive douche. So like, 
and that's even worse. I, and I'm setting myself up for that one as well. No, but, but, um, but but you know, to 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 big you up, do you know what I mean? It's like you know, once again, I think that it's you know, there there are lots of people who spend you know 20 years trying to perfect a kick drum with a sign sure, wave, yeah. and there's a place for that, of course. Yeah, totally. But then there's also a place for just like I said, t- taking inspiration from sound. I think yeah, and and applying it, you know, quickly and effectively, which is what you're doing. I right? think where the hard work comes in for me to validate myself yet again is like doing all of this like shit up here is is that's that that's where like my I'm truly creative. I don't like arranging too much. I find arranging really difficult. Um, I find that that's where like working with Omar so closely comes in. Um, in that he can like be like I played this out last night and it sounded a little because he plays out a bit more than me. So like um, he'll be like, yeah, I kind of wanted it to do this at this point. So I'll be like, okay, I'll try that out and then um, or I won't talk to him for like a couple of weeks and then like <laughs> and then just be like, fine. But um, but. It's it's normally like if you can make it so much that the work is done before you even get there. Like on days when I don't feel like writing stuff, then I will make all these sample banks and I'll make all of these like two, three minute long bleach lab bounces, reactor bounces. So the next time I go in, I could just like put a boring kick kick drum, but then I can have like uh, bring in a bit of myself and I work in templates as well. So like every time I open a new project, it's still me. It feels like me. I don't have to go too far to like find, find how the last track sounded, or you know, get that world back. And like, I think so. Another another thing that I do that I, that I kind of like, I do this a lot, which basically like, I've got that thing um, solo. But, no. So this is like the second. that i send that tail is massive um i i do this basically with my tracks where i just like absolutely crush them i don't do this anymore but like that is just absolutely rinsed in there and it just fills the mix up the whole track the whole yeah, track, yeah, sure. everything is yeah, in sure. there. Like, it's almost like tape saturation, mm. compression, really kind of give it. I yeah. normally just compress it. Yeah. Or it's mm. parallel compression. Yeah. But like, you can get creative with it. You can like put a flanger on it. Like, go crazy. <laughs> put a flanger on yeah. it. You know, so, so wacky. But, um, but, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that guy, that, that's got me out of a lot of trouble. Um, this, 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 that's like, a, that's a yeah, satin. that's a yeah. that's a Yuhi it's good, satin. It's good, yeah, it's good um, it's a, yeah, it's a beast. Yeah, and I've literally just maxed it out, man. I mean, like, as soon as I try and save myself, I'm like, look at this plugin that I've completely like <laughs> destroyed. But you know, some somehow it just com- comes together. Like, I got got a lot of, got a lot of auxes here as well, just because of the CPU, because the old CPU, because like I can't can't run as many plugins as I used to. But I think this this. This track and like I could have I could have brought a track in well I couldn't because of my CPU but like something that had like reactor and then like battery and all of that and then it, I feel like it's a bit less um uh I feel like it would be a bit disingenuous because then it's like oh look at all of the shiny toys when it's like this track is essentially just audio that I've like I spent fourteen quid on like that that plugin I I I would not get that one and that's the most recent one. Don't buy that one because it 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 sucks. So like, get that one, and if you want it, like, ah, oh, does it need a code? I think I've got the code. If you emailed me, I get the code. Give me fourteen pounds and I'll send it on to my man Giorgio, <laughs> and make sure he gets it. Um, but but yeah, there's loads of there's loads of other stuff for doing this. Uh, there's like Cecilia Five. I don't know if anyone's heard of Cecilia Five. That's like it's like another um standalone software that you can like there's uh there's spear as well do you know spear and it's where you can like draw you can draw like names in in uh in waveforms and then play like i made a made a made like a birthday video for someone but, and it was just like, <laughs> it was like happy That's birthday so kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you know what it got no like i put it i put it so everyone could see it got no traction i was really annoyed about that it's like, it really annoying i don't get it man. yeah <laughs> Yeah, I see these guys. Got another question? Question here, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, totally. So, so like, um, stepping up to Logic 10 was like, it's so big for me. It changed everything. It's like, I was saying to Tony how like, it turned things 3D, whereas like Logic 9 felt so 2D and flat and fuzzy and like a bit weird. And then like, and I'm like, I'm like the last kind of guy, as you've seen, I'm like the last kind of guy to be being like, ooh, it's like, mm, just a bit like mm, 2D. But like, it, it, as soon as I started working on Logic 10, it's like just suddenly it all opened up. You can make stuff so loud as well, which is what I really like in the creative process. And um, before doing stuff like that, what I do is I procrastinate for like years and I put it off, which is what I did with Logic 9. I like, I was using Logic 9 up until like, maybe like February. Yeah. That's a while. February that's 2019. A, that's, 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 that's a long contemplating period. Is it? Yeah. Christ. Yeah. And then I've got to pay another 200 pounds. So, so yeah. I, do you know what? I thought I was like, I thought I was like an island. I thought I was like, I was like burial. And I was like, ooh, I'm making like this ooh, out of date software. And it's, ooh, it's so, it's so, so like, it's just me doing it. Like, ooh. Um, and and it was just it's just not worth it like having the latest gear is sick like it does does make everything sound better it's like updating your computer all the time stops you from getting hacked by russian bitcoin miners which is what i got <laughs> hacked by russian bitcoin miners but like um i i downloaded like melodyne the software i downloaded like a crack of it and then they like started using my computer they one day i was watching a film this is off the off subject, but <laughs> like, um, I was watching a film on my like studio computer, and then like the the fans started being like, and then I was like, let's bring up the old activity monitor, and then I looked at it, and it was just like some Russian code at the top of the, using a hundred percent of my CPU. So I was like, googled it, and they were like, delete everything now. Like they have your photos, your passwords. So don't download Melodyne. I uh, don't download a crack of Melodyne. That was before I had all of the native instrument stuff, and I was like, I need, I need good stuff. Um, so I was desperate, and then I ended up just like screwing myself over. Um, so yeah, let that be a lesson to you all, <laughs> to, to not like from me to you, because that took uh, uh, my computer was almost a write off. It's still a bit of a zombie. My main, my main studio computer. Yeah, it sucks, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> don't get hacked, exactly. hacked. That's a good <laughs> now i've got this guy which is you know keeps me keeps me key. keeps me safe at night <laughs> i can sleep easy knowing that i've got some Dispersky's russian got your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, you gotta gotta hire a criminal to get a criminal <laughs> so, so yeah because first yeah, exactly. and then i found out that it was like it's mainly for pcs and they just ported it for max and my mate is like it's ah oh, I feel I feel robbed twice. Anyway, I hope they got some good Bitcoin in out of my out of my studio computer. Cool. Um, Anyone else? Question here, yeah. I think I think that's psychological. I think that's like, um, I think that's like, cause, right. Uh, if 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 I see a record, I I won't I won't instantly think like, oh, that doesn't fit on there. You kind of you ha you have like a trust in that like it all makes sense. You almost it's almost like some weird like that black magic I was talking about. How like you have so much faith in the label and the, the and the and the producer and stuff that you kind of you believe them even if something so that the fourth track off the last um record i did was made on this laptop i actually like couldn't bring that up because all of m my like ensembles had been like uploaded to the cloud <laughs> um, this, i hate this like laptop man it's like no hdmi no 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 ensembles but um but I don't, I don't make like, I think, I think it's just uh, a, a specific uh, amount of time spent on, so if you say like, uh, these are all tracks from like the last year. So like, um, they're all going to sound pretty similar unless you, you know, go off on like some, uh, some like uh, electro swing vibe on like one of the tracks. The, the, yeah. So like the, the, the mastering does like make a difference. I think, I, th I think having that like, um, 
having that like common goal of you and the label manager means that you're never going to pick something that sounds so outlandish i think i think like there were on the last record i, I did there were there were like three or four tracks that didn't make the cut and that's because they wouldn't have fit in that world i think so i think all the decisions have been made like i i i'd like to think it it's all like all right i'm in like this ep writing mode and i'm only gonna do like xyz on all my tracks which i think you do but like yeah i think there's a certain kind of like trust that you have in the in the in the, in the label that they're gonna Yeah, so basically, like, on, on that last record, the fourth track, I think, sounds so different to all the others. And um, because I made it on here, because I made it with all the reactor stuff, whereas the other stuff wasn't any reactor, and it was made, like, a year and a half after all the others. But, like, but I haven't had anyone, like, come up to me and be like, that track does not fit. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess so. That's a nice way to think about it. I wish I had done it. <laughs> like a like to be continued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a big cliffhanger. <laughs> a big preview is like the final track. <laughs> Next time on Time Down. Yeah, with a Russian accent as well. So yeah. Man, those pesky <laughs> Russians, man. No cool. you know. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Anyone else question at the back there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. I think if we uh, like, if we could look at it, like, um, then it's nice having stuff that runs through the whole thing that I can like, like that pad. That pad is just like that's gonna be there wherever. And I think I've just put it left and right. No, I haven't. No, I've got I've got one that's pitch shifted up. But I know that I can come back to that after the beat. I can kind of like bring that back in and get get a bit of clarity. And then what I do at first to make it, I'll make like a 16 or a 32 that is so maximal it has everything in and keep adding more stuff in. And then you can kind of just bleed it out over like a, over like a, a, a track. And then for example, in this track, that didn't happen. So it's not a good example of that because I had all of this stuff here, I had all of this stuff here, which is this huge base. I've actually got a version of that. Um, which you know might surface at some time, but like, um, I had to go back and be like, right, what's a hook here? Like, what's a hook? Like, what's gonna get, what's gonna make me still interested in it? And it was like basically putting, I put like samples of, um, I think this is Elsa Justell. Oh, that one's called Arsehole. <laughs> um, oh, so, so I didn't even heavily vet this project. Like, um, so there's yeah, Elsa Justell. She's like, um. She's like a music concrete, like, like she's just not not very well known, but like makes incre like incredible stuff, and I think that's what got <laughs> basically just put that through the through the um through the delay, and that's like enough for me. It kind of had that like how how instantly when I made it, it felt like that like 2012 Bodica kind of like that da 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 da. It's just like simple, does a bit like I don't have to. For me, this track is like quite a weird color and it kind of just like, I've actually color cut, like I was saying to Tony, this, this, it was an absolute bomb site when I went in here because I hadn't been in here in months. Like, why would I? But like, and I had to color code everything. And this isn't how I work. Everything is like that kind of default logic blue. So like, I don't color code anything. I don't keep it tight or anything, anything like that. Anyway, I've, I've carried on talking cool. for a while. Go for it. it happens to, to all of us yeah yeah no no totally no 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 i think i think it's a, i think it's also almost a way of like uh i had quite difficulty arranging this because it's a beat so it's like how do you like how do you I, I, I normally i come from drum and bass so it's like build ups drops build ups drops and then this is more like a beat and it's like a beat that kind of like goes through a groove 
So it's like nice to have this. And it's so simple. And I, li- I was listening back to it. It's like, oh my God, it's so basic. You can hear that when it like loops over. Obviously not now because it's not playing. Um, but yeah, this is the pad in it. And I don't know where I got it from. I actually know I got it from Bleach Lab. And it would have been like another pad that I would have ripped or something like that. And just having it there made it easier for me to arrange the track. Just having it there, knowing that I can come back to something, because I was actually finding it quite difficult. to. Ma- this track was like so difficult to make because it's like, it's so close to being so boring, but like, it's just, you're just on that line where like, it sounds good in a club, but then at home it, uh, there's something, there's almost something techy about it and like, that keeps it, that kept me interested in it anyway. Um, if that answers your question, I, I'm not too sure, man. You find that it works for you though. <laughs> nah. Yeah, I think I think I think my process every time is so different, and that's what brings me such inconsistency. Like, for every track that I make that gets put out, there's like, uh, there's like quite a few. There's like I'd say like one in five like actually gets released. Um. And I'm, and you know, I may, I make other good stuff that just doesn't get out there. It's just like not quite got that thing to like push it up and get it like, and get it out. So it's kind of, it's I, I do so many things. I try so many different things. And I don't have an exact style that it's actually quite like, I'm like a bad example for doing this. But like, you know, I don't think I've made another track that looks like that. You know, it's because it's like every time I'm trying to, because otherwise I get quite bored actually. Like. Well, um, on that tip as well, I mean, um, I, I get the sense that you're not really, apart from your drum and bass days, I get I get the sense that you're not so genre specific now. You just nah, nah, yeah, not, you not just, at all. Yeah. Like on the next on the next record, there's like I used to be because I used to be like when I first did it, it was like techno. So it was like, um, it was like when I'd go out and I would DJ, I'd like I'd have like a four bm BPM difference from like the start to the end, and it would be like woo. Um, but <laughs> but now I'm like whoop. And um and and like on the next record there's like there's like 100 BPM dancehall kind of thing. It's like just me fucking about with dancehall, like culturally appropriating the whole thing. <laughs> but like um but like doing like my my it's not really dancehall. It's just like one 100 BPM. And then there's like stuff I was doing at 150, and it's like I'm comfortable enough now that it all sounds like me. You know, I don't I don't have to sound like me within a certain BPM. It like it's all gonna be. I'm confident that it's like, it's all you, Joe, like, you're fine. And does that come from the fact that you've got confidence from, you know, releases being well-received and, being yeah. able to, and, ab- and you know, and able to obviously DJ and perform? Yeah, you know. I think I think, I think so. So you can so. take risks in that respect. Yeah, you know I think it's also like Logic 10 allowed me to do so much more than Logic 9 ever did. There's like, uh, I remember when I started, like, first week on Logic 10, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm genuinely so excited to get this stuff out just because it's like, it's so much different to anything else I've ever done. Like, that's why I was saying to you, like, going into this project, I was like, man, it's so, like, it, it's so boring. It's not boring, but it's like, it just, it just does a job, you know, whereas now I'm like, bleh, 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 you know, it's like doing, doing a lot more. Um, maybe boring is like a... No, that's not the right word, is it? Yeah. I, mean, it? I think, you know. So um, how do you find homes for your music? Um, well, at the moment, like... Um, I I used to, I used to be quite a, like a nomad with it like I like I was like moving around and getting friendships and then someone being like we got to do a record man like for example like um the stuff I did with neighborhood like I've been good friends with Tasha for many years so it kind of came about we we played back to back we played at each other's parties we just got really friendly and um it made sense to do a record um we we had we've had some horrible nights as well and staying up until horrible hours and like i've seen some ho- seen some horrible things so so just like might as well might as well um categorize this yeah um, <laughs> um so stuff like that and then with where to now it's like they're they're like a historically a brighton label and um and i live in brighton and and it kind of like made sense to do something there and with time dance i did the uh i did the second time dance release um as under the name else um, and it was like a secret thing. It was like a new name for me. Um, and it's almost like, it's like, 
it's almost like Euro 92. It's like the forgotten tournament. Like it's like, it's like, it's like the forgotten time dance relief. Um, but, but I remember Omar like, cause I didn't know that time dance was like, obviously I didn't like need to be persuaded that much, but I was like, I really didn't want to release those, those tunes. I remember Omar just ringing me up like twice a week and just being like, we got to do this. We got to do this. And I was like, me, I don't know. But like, Little did I know that Time Dance would grow into the uh, bastion of UK dance music that it is today. <laughs> so, so uh, to answer your question, uh, it basically, basically through friendships and meeting people and and uh, and cracking on, yeah. After, you after considering parties. doing your own thing at some point, do you think? Uh, no, um, <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I think I I I had uh, there was a point when I was at university where me and my friend Sam who is divided who I spoke about where we were like thinking of setting up the club night into a into a into a label but I just didn't have the capital because I was at university so I think it could have happened there like we were working closely with um an artist um who goes on name Aya now formerly known as Loft and um and you know we were tight with her trying to make something happen but then like it's you need to you know um, as i'm sure a lot of people in this room know you need to put down like money that a student doesn't like like just like 1500 quid or like two grand to, and or you can get um i forget someone will know the name in, in this room but like it's like a it's where you get the label to pay to distribute do you know what i mean um i forget what it's called but they basically have faith in you and you it's like a well com not a consignment deal so like mm. several ones similar yeah, yeah it's so like that yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, it never really appealed to me. Um seeing seeing um seeing how Omar's aged in the last five years as well. <laughs> it's uh, he's it's yeah, it, it's 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 not really I don't feel like it's ever my job to put out someone else's music. I'm like I'm I almost feel like I don't wanna get I don't wanna get involved in someone's process. Uh I don't when someone sends me feedback as well I'm always I'm always like yeah it's sick like yeah I'm like the worst guy to send feedback to because I'm just like I'm always trying to be everyone's friend so it's like I think I just put out some rubbish music of some guy that I just met at the pub <laughs> just because I just because I was too embarrassed not to <laughs> put 1500 quid behind you know Gary from the That's boozer great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so look out for that one when it comes out because it will come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. So, um, yeah. so you're playing tonight. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, what can we expect? Um, I've got a load of guest lists if anyone wants to come. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, I, I know nobody in Sheffield. <laughs> nice one, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm opening the room, but um, I was told that I'm like, that George Fitzgerald is on at the same time. So it's probably like the... Um, um, the weirdest clash I've ever been involved in. Um, <laughs> probably, yeah, probably a lineup I'd never see myself on, but it's me, Omar, and Nazira in the same room. So I'm opening it up. I've been playing a load of what, 100 BPM stuff at the moment, and it's been really, really fun. Um, the, the most recent mix I did for Crack was kind of like a, it was like a kind of extension of that in like, it's like, uh, like sped up drum and bass so the drum and bass being at 85 bpm like one, 170 and when you speed it up to 100 or 200 um uh like a like a mad scientist you get like you get essentially like dance hall that but if you choose like the right if you don't choose like the like that, that's bad <laughs> speeding up the nine to like <laughs> darren oh, looking on yeah, a, yeah. disapprovingly <laughs> um but um but yeah, so so it sounds it's like a really nice little cheat code if you speed up that drum and bass. It like but it's gotta be that it's um, like a sweet spot, you know, tempo wise, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and because C DJs are so clever these days, the time stretching it feels quite still you know, I remember when it used that like you'd pitch something up by like ten BPM, um, and it would start to like show its like grains. Um but yeah, with master tempo, anything's possible. So I think I'm just starting out slow. Like when the clubs, when there's no one in the club as well, I like playing those like um, really like weird sound designy music concrete bits, and then just like yeah, it's quite nice peace. And then and then uh, and then letting the students, I say, and then they just you know they wash and then to the, the and front. Then the tempo goes. <laughs> <Yeah. up. laughs> <That's good. laughs> Ramp it up. Bring him in. Ramp it up. <laughs> 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 oh, 
I'm like, just, ah, uh, I'm ready. And then <laughs> bring on those students. But yeah, if anyone would want guest list, then I would like, you must be a student. I need to see an NUS card. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to it, actually. First time in Sheffield, first time in Sheffield ever. Yeah, and as a football fan, being in, being in such an important footballing city, you know, so it's, I can feel it, I can smell it. <laughs> the rivalry, the chip butty. Indeed. <laughs> Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So Omar, like this is NB, but Omar messaged me, you know, half an hour ago, just being in, he was in the same lift as Jurgen Klopp. So, and and he didn't get a picture. Omar is Batu, if that adds any. He's been. St <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something. I but don't know uh, if that. Do you mean that? <laughs> I was sarcastic. I, I was gonna say something. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to be cryptic. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think anyone knew either. I thought it was like, oh, it's a nice twist at the end of at the end of the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just this guy that I just, he's yeah, he's like my, he's the guy that I paid to make this track off Fiverr. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So on that note, now we have established who yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> So, are you Joe or Metris? Oh, that's fine, Metris. Metris, thank you so much, man. It's amazing. Nice one, Tony. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you. thank you. Cheers. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone. Cheers.